Good morning, boys and girls. Today is May 31st, the last day of May. I'm Mrs. Hands, and I'm going to have your lesson today. And our lesson is on Israel and AI. And I think that's a, a funny little name for a city. <clears throat> and I looked it up, and I found three different ways to pronounce it. I found I, AI, and AE. I was taught that it was AI, so that's what I'm going to call it today. Let's talk a little bit about what you learned last week. You've been studying and having lessons on the Israelites as they were coming out of Egypt and all of the hardships that they faced and all the miracles God performed for them. And now they are finally to the promised land after a long, long time. Do you remember how long they were out there wandering around because they disobeyed God? Anybody remember? 40 years. 40 years, that's a long time to just be wandering around somewhere all because you disobeyed God and didn't listen to what he had told you. Well, now that they are under Joshua's leadership and they have made it to the promised land and the time is right for them to go in, the first battle that they came upon was the battle of, who remembers? Jericho. That's right, the Battle of Jericho. And this was a very strange battle. It really wasn't much of a battle at all. If you remember from last week, God told them to march around the walls of the city. March around, march around. One time a day for six days. On the seventh day, they were to have trumpets, horns, something that they could blow into and make noise. They were to march around without saying a word, march around six times, and on the seventh time, they were to blow their horns and shout, and the walls would come tumbling down. And that is exactly what happened. It happened exactly like God said it would. Now, after the walls had come down and they were able to get inside the city, God had given them some very, very specific instructions. He said, the Lord told Joshua, don't keep any possessions. All the silver and the gold will be dedicated to the Lord and must be be brought into the treasury. So whatever they found in there, they were not to keep it. They were not to take it. They were to leave it or destroy it, except for the silver and the gold, which would be like if we found money. And they were to bring that back, and it was going to be put into the Lord's treasury, which would be like our offering plate that we take up and we keep in our our bank account. Well, knowing what you know about the Israelites, what do you think? Did they do what they were told to do? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to read from Joshua 7, and I'm going to read the Living Bible version because I think it's a little easier for us to understand. So this is Joshua 7. And at the end of Joshua 6, we find that Jericho had fallen. They had saved Rahab because she had helped them. Joshua put a, said a terrible curse on anyone who tried to rebuild Jericho. And... Now we're ready for Joshua 7. But there was sin among the Israelites. God's command to destroy everything, remember? He said, 
Don't keep anything. His command to destroy everything except that which was reserved for the Lord's treasury was disobeyed. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the grandson of Zabdi, and the great-grandson of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the loot for himself. And the Lord was very angry with the entire nation of Israel because of this. Soon after Jericho's defeat, Joshua sent some of his men to spy on the city of Ai, east of Bethel. Upon their return, they told Joshua, it's a small city and it won't take more than two or 3,000 of us to destroy it. There's no point in all of us going there. So about 3,000 soldiers were sent and they were soundly defeated. About 36 of the Israelites were killed during the attack and many others died while being chased by the men of Ai as far as the quarries. The Israelite army was paralyzed with fear at this turn of events. Joshua and the elders tore their clothing and lay flat on the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening with dust on their heads. Now that might sound like a strange thing, but in this time, during the Bible time, when someone was showing their great distress and sadness before the Lord, they would tear their clothes and throw dust and dirt on their head. Joshua cried out to the Lord, O oh Jehovah, why have you brought us over the Jordan River if you are going to let the Amorites kill us? Why weren't we content with what we had? Why didn't we stay on the other side? O oh Lord, what am I to do now that Israel has fled from her enemies? For when the Canaanites and the other nearby nations hear about it, they will surround us and attack us and wipe us out. And then what will happen to the honor of your great name? But the Lord said to Joshua, get up off your face. Israel has sinned and disobeyed my, disobeyed my commandment and has taken loot when I said it was not to be taken. Now, do you think God said, oh, Joshua, get up, dry your tears off here. Let's get a hanky and let's wipe your face. We'll make it better. Do you think he said that? I don't. I think he said it like, get up off your face. They have disobeyed my commandment and taken loot when I said it was not to be taken. And they have not only taken it, they have lied about it and hidden it among their belongings. That is why the people of Israel Sorry, I lost my place. That is why the people of Israel are being defeated. That is why your men are running from their enemies, for they are cursed. I will not stay with you any longer unless you completely rid yourselves of this sin. Get up. Tell the people. Each of you must undergo purification rites and preparation for tomorrow. Now that means if you're getting ready for something important, you take a bath, you take a shower, you wash your hair, you put on clean clothes. That's what he meant when he said purification rites. Clean up because tomorrow the Lord your God of Israel says that someone has stolen from him and you cannot defeat your enemies until you deal with this sin. In the morning, you must come by tribes and the Lord will point out the tribe to which the guilty man belongs. And that tribe must come by its clans and the Lord will point out the guilty clan and the clan must come by its families. And then each member of the guilty family must come one by one. And the, the one who has stolen that which belongs to the Lord shall be burned with fire along with everything else he has. For he has violated the covenant of the Lord and has brought calamity on all of Israel. So early the next morning, Joshua brought the tribes of Israel before the Lord, and the tribe of Judah was indicated. Now, how do you think the guy feels? Who knows he did this? 
I think he's probably pretty scared right now. Then he brought the clans of Judah, and the clan of Zerah was singled out. Then the families of that clan were brought before the Lord, and the family of Zabdi was indicated. Zab Zabdi's family was brought man by man, and his grandson, Achan, was found to be the guilty one. Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the God of Israel and make your confession. Tell me what you have done. Achan replied, I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. For I saw a beautiful robe imported from Babylon and some silver worth $200 and a bar of gold worth $500. I wanted them so much that I took them and they are hidden in the ground beneath my tent with the silver buried deeper than the rest. So Joshua sent some men to search for the loot. They ran to the tent and found the stolen goods hidden there, just as Achan had said, with the silver buried beneath the rest. They brought it all to Joshua and laid it on the ground in front of him. Then Joshua and all the Israelites took Achan, the silver, the robe, the gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and everything he had, and brought them to the valley of Accor. Then Joshua said to Achan, Why have you brought calamity on us? The Lord will now bring calamity on you. And the men of Israel stoned them to death and burned their bodies, and piled a great heap of stones upon them. The stones are still there to this day, and even today that place is called the Valley of Calamity. And so the fierce anger of the Lord was ended. I think they all learned a lesson, didn't they? I would hope that they did. <clears throat> the point of our of our story, of our Bible story. Destruction comes upon those who do not follow the word of God. And what had Achan tried to do? He had taken those things. He found a pretty robe we might say it was a jacket, and he liked it. He wanted it. He thought, I would look pretty good in this. So he took it, and he found some money, and he thought, I can use some extra money. I'm going to take this. Nobody's going to know. Nobody will know. I'll bury him under my tent, and no one will ever know. Now, I'm going to ask you to... Close your eyes. You can't peek. Close your eyes and count to 50. Okay? No peeking. No peeking. You ready? Start counting. One, two, three. Okay, that's long enough. Now, what did we, what did I just tell you? You can't hide your sins from God. So I've tried. I've, I've put some things on me that I'm wondering if you can see. Hmm, what's this up here? Oh, I thought I had that one hidden really good. Shoot, I didn't. Oh, down here. I don't know if you can see it. I've got this nifty little pocket. <gasps> There's another one. I thought I could hide it, but I couldn't. Oh, way down here. There's one. 
Well, I could go on and on. But I want you, just 10 seconds, close your eyes again. Okay, you can open them. This is how it looks to God. You can't hide it because it's all over you. It's inside you. And he knows it. And the only way to get rid of it is to ask Jesus for forgiveness. You have to repent of your sin. And Jesus shed his blood so that we could be forgiven. Now I'm going to take this off. I'm not going to wear that. Well, the soldiers went to Achan's tent. And they found it just like Achan said. Buried under his tent. He said the silver was the deepest. There it is. There's the gold. This is kind of small. And there's his pretty coat. All hidden down under his tent. He didn't get to keep any of it, did he? He didn't get to keep anything that he had. So... Our story today, our, our verse today, that we are to remember, destruction comes upon those who do not follow the word of God, and you can't hide your sin from God. I hope you remember about Achan and his tent and the things he hid. And I hope you remember that this is what our sin looks like to God. So let's pray, and then I'll dismiss you. Dear Father, we thank you for these boys and girls who have listened to the lesson today. We hope that they've learned that you can't hide sin from you. It's obvious, it's evident, it's all over, because we are sin, and we need your forgiveness. Now I ask that you go with these boys and girls as summer is getting underway and there will be lots of fun things to do and we just pray for their safety and that they will stay close to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye. I'll see you later.